One word. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Comrade or compadre. In one word. Wow. That's hard. If I use two. <laughs> um. In one word. Health. Peace, love, and happiness. That's three words. I know. <laughs> the word I'm looking for is things I can't find in other supermarkets. So whatever that word would be. Unique. Community asset. That's two. Friendly. Quality. Connection. I think connection. Cooperation. Essential. Indispensable. I would say family. History. Hope. Trust. Leadership. Local. Sustainability. Nourishment. Everything. Delicious. Yummy. Fresh. Uh, community. 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 That's the same word I had. Isn't everybody saying community? Community. Yeah, I was going to say that. My name is Siri Narayan Fuda. My original owner number was 12. In October of 19... 70. All of a sudden, this young woman, obviously a college girl, comes practically running out of the art gallery on the corner of Lexington and Ashland. Lady, lady, we're going to be opening a food co-op. And just at this minute, out from behind her comes graduate student Marvin Berlowitz, who says, um, yes, this is going to be an organization of the people and by the people and for the people and we do hope that you will consider joining. And I didn't even have to think about it. I said yes, right there on the spot. My name is Dorothy Shaw, and I joined the co-op in 1971. I was visiting a neighbor across the street who said, something's going on. There are a lot of hippies on that corner. Go see what it is. So I lined up with the hippies, and then it turned out that you got credit if you worked. And so I became a cheese cutter. And that's one of the most satisfying, social, really nice things I have ever done in my life. I would go there once a week and cut cheese right now. Alan Friedman, 1972. Well, I'm a lifelong artist. I run and own Great Arrow Graphics. Great Arrow cards are pretty much the only silkscreen printed cards in the universe. I also have a pretty avid uh, hobby as an astrophotographer. I take pictures of the sun from my backyard in downtown Buffalo. I love to be an owner of the Lexington Co-op because what could be better than owning the store at the corner of your block? I'm Dale Anderson. I'm glad to be an owner because I know I'm making Buffalo better. This is what I looked like when I became an owner of the co-op in 1973. I left Buffalo to go to San Francisco. It was in 1974. San Francisco at the time, you know, was Hippieville. And, uh, you know, I was printing t-shirts at this hippie t-shirt factory. And uh, I came back to Buffalo. There was nothing like that happening. You know, I thought to myself at the time, this is, this is what I'm gonna do. I did this one design called Buffalo City of No Illusions, which everybody is familiar with. And I started doing the co-op t-shirts. And that one, which I did, which was an artichoke, I really liked a lot. This shirt is a little later than that. This is about 1980. And it was probably the third or fourth shirt that the co-op authorized for itself. I had earlier ones, but um, I think my daughter took some of them, and she, she wore them out. <laughs> I'm Jesse Grossman. I'm owner number 188, and I became an owner in 1975. Very often, the, the checkout people at the co-op whistle or say, wow, when I give my number. I have been a member for 175 years. I have a very kind of a cute co-op story. Not cute. Some guy stole a, a package of meat, 
And the grocery manager, Jim Park, was the fastest native in Buffalo at his age. So in the marathons, he would always come in first of the local people. So some guy stole the meat, and Jim is so slightly built. He'd say, what if water, I know I can catch him, but what if I, what do I do if I catch him? And Roy Cunningham, who used to jump out of airplanes for the military, all right, with a radio on his back, he says, don't worry about that. I'll be there soon after you get there. And uh, so Jim Park runs him down and starts to slow him down and Roy comes up and the guy throws the meat in the air. And, and the cop came along and he put the guy in the car. Uh, but that's a great story. We love telling it. My name is Franklin Lavoie. Buffalo is the Earth representation of Taurus the bull. And the sun is in Taurus in May. And the earth comes to life in May with diverse flowers, dainty colors, and delicate sweets. This is like Persephone coming out of the underworld with the richest remnant in the world. And Buffalo is her palace. This is what the co-op is offering, real food from the earth. And to buy real food, organically grown locally, is to be in tune with Mother Nature. And this is the trajectory of evolution. This is the way we're gonna move into the future. My name is Derek Bateman. I became a member of the co-op in 1977. The average piece of food at the average store travels 1,500 miles between the farm and your plate. So what we're trying to do is kind of radical. We are trying to create a local food system to as much as possible procure or purchase our food as close to Western New York as we possibly can. We have relationships with farmers that go back 30, 40, almost 50 years. We've been buying from the same farmers. When we expanded to Hurdle Avenue, we had to go back to our farmers and say, we need more. We're, we're gonna have another store. You have to grow more for us. As part of my job at the co-op, I sign all the checks. But every time I sign the checks, I can't believe how many of them go to local people, to our local farms, to all kinds of local business people. My office, where I work, has one of the best views in the city of Buffalo. When I walk over to the mezzanine and look down, I see all the people shopping and asking questions. It's just such a wonderful feeling to see all that connection. Larry Rubin, 1981. I love the fact that, it, that I, it's in my neighborhood. I love walking to the co-op, picking up a few things, walking back. Whenever I walk into the co-op, I pick up the, the little green thing, the basket, and start walking down the aisle, and I feel like, you know, this is, I belong here. This is a good place. I like it. I am 96, born November 6, 1924, when he had the Model T's as a luxury car. <laughs> I love the co-op really with how they educate others on a better lifestyle and eating healthily. My name is Timothy Engler, and I'm an owner of the Lexington Co-op since 1985. I'm a local artist and a religious statue restorer. There's no other place where you can get like 10 kinds of local apples. No, I can't name all 10, like Jonah Gold, Empire, Fuji, Golden Delicious. In the early days of the co-op, I had a job where I had to wear a coat and tie. And I would often stop there on my way home from work, dressed for work. And I remember feeling not quite groovy enough. Junko Kanamura, 1987. I was born and grew up in Hiroshima, Japan. I love to eat, I love butter, so I decided to be a baker. I'm really grateful that Lexington Co-op is selling my cookies. My all-time best-selling cookie is Sabre, which is a French butter cookie. But butter is very expensive in Japan. We don't have a big dairy industry. The country is mountainous, so my mother wouldn't let me eat as much as I want. So uh, in the evening when she's taking a bath, I would sneak into the kitchen and I just take some butter and lick. 
Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I love butter. <laughs> Chris Van Vechten, 1987. They're the only place you can find good pine nuts. And why is that important? Because I need to make pesto. Ron Gettner, and I became an owner in 1989. I love being an owner because I feel that in my small way, I'm making a contribution to the community and to the farmers in the area and supporting their work. It is unlike any other store. It's owned by the community and you're gonna find products that are local. So in fact, you'll probably meet some of the farmers if you're there at the right time when they're making deliveries. You'll learn their stories. You'll, you'll hear the story about the kombucha that we have on our shelves. You'll hear the story from the cider makers who go around and pick apples from abandoned orchards and turn that into a special blend of cider, which is phenomenal. My name is Jeff Kelly, and I became a member of the co-op for the first time in 1992. My mother was an early member of the co-op. I was just a kid and she would drag me along, stopping at the co-op to do the obligatory worker hours, the membership hours, uh, cutting cheese, stocking shelves, unloading a truck. I was five or six years old. And the thing I remember uh, best and, and worst is stirring this five gallon bucket of peanut butter that was like concrete. It had like two inches of oil on the top and whole peanuts like aggregate in it. And it was impossible, you know, it was just so thick. It was a nightmare. I'm Samantha White, 1993. The Lexington Co-op is a big part of why I love living in Buffalo. We embarked on the member loan drive, which was nothing short of miraculous. It's the most successful member loan drive of any co-op in the country. My name is Elnisa Banks, and I became an owner in 1996. The Challenger is a Black-owned community newspaper in the city of Buffalo. And I've been publishing this community newspaper now for 42 years. I had to have my health to do the work, and so the co-op was very helpful. Your health is your wealth, and without it, you don't have anything. My name is Tim Bartlett, and I started working at the co-op in 1997, and I became an owner in 1998. In 2006, we had been open on Elmwood for just a little over a year, and the October storm hit and shut us down. I mean, we lost power for five days. And so we had all this product that was just spoiling in the back. And what we ended up doing was we just put it all in shopping carts and put it out in the, in the parking lot. And I remember we started with ice cream and within minutes, there were kids just running down Elmwood toward the co-op's parking lot trying to get their hands on that free ice cream. Diane Picard, 1998. I'm the executive director of the Massachusetts Avenue Project, and we make sure fresh, affordable food is available to everyone and train young people in sustainable urban agriculture. We really see the co-op as a partner, and their partnership has really helped us grow as an organization and has helped our youth really see their own potential. My name's J.D. Hartman. Owner number 1912. I've been a member since 1999. I go there every day. Every, I'm a, I live right around the corner. So at the co-op, I'm affectionately known as 1912. Matter of fact, I left an apple on the uh, checkout counter and the woman came out. I was about two doors down. She said, hey, 1912. <laughs> she, and, and to me, that made my day. <laughs> my name is Jennifer Nelbone. I moved back to Western New York in the late 1990s to work on the Great Lakes and to help protect this amazing natural resource. When I came back to Western New York, everywhere I turned, I bumped into someone who had spent their lifetime trying to make Buffalo a better place to be. And I wanted to do that too. So one of the first things I did was look for the co-op. I'm Melissa Gardner. Kevin Gardner, 1998. Well, we own Five Points Bakery, and the idea behind the bakery was to have bread that was produced locally with grains that were grown locally. It was a real big leap of faith. The co-op has always been there for us. The co-op is our only wholesale account. It really helped us get started. We couldn't have done what we did without the co-op. 
I'm so thankful for everything they've done for us over the years. My name is Linda Gelman. In my professional career, I was a photographer. I do have a favorite photo. One of the, I think her name was Amanda, was holding one of their reusable bags from the co-op and they had just gotten them in and they were new and the produce aisle was beautiful. Everything was fresh and it, it was really fun to do. Deidre email. We became members in 2000. Become an owner. Why? Because you will have the power to decide what happens in your grocery store, what happens in your community, and how your dollars are spent. Peter Fowler, uh, I joined in 2001. I'm an artist, uh, I'm a painter. Uh, one of my paintings actually is in the, the Hurdle Co-op. Lauren Makienko, 2001. And I'm the Director of Education at Buffalo Audubon Society. Buffalo Audubon's mission is to protect all the places for birds. One of my favorite memories of the co-op is when we moved from Lexington Avenue to Elmwood Avenue. There were a bunch of members that got together to help physically move the merchandise from one store closing to another opening the very next day. And I have this photo, I don't know who took it, it's probably 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Kind of exhausted from moving things back and forth. I feel like a really lucky person to have been involved in many ways along the trip that has brought the co-op to where it is today and hopefully where it goes in the future. Rebecca Williams, 2002. I am co-founder of Food for the Spirit, a emerging nonprofit organization dedicated to racial healing, ecological justice, and equitable food systems. I'm grateful to the Lexington Co-op for their support of so many community initiatives over the years, like this one, which is the Lincoln Memorial Church Garden. The Co-op builds community. It's not just a store to buy stuff, but it really invests in making Buffalo better by helping local farmers, helping other local businesses, and it's great for Buffalo. I'm Justin Booth. I'm Lily Booth. We've been owners of the co-op since 2004. Everything that we do as a family is on bicycle. The co-op is a neighborhood grocery store. And for us, that means the ability to walk or bike there and not have to drive. Yeah, our daughter got saddlebags for her Christmas. So she can help us Carry groceries. Carry groceries. <laughs> My name is Alexa Wajed. I became an owner of Lexington Co-op in 2006. And I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a chef, I'm a jewelry designer. Honestly, I think everybody should become an owner. I've had many people ask me actually, why well, I can't shop there because I'm not an owner. It's like, no, Lexington Co-op is for everyone. And the benefits of becoming an owner is you, you own a piece of that dedication and that community and that local, and you get good food. Hi, I'm Caitlin Lavello, and this is my husband, Brian Lavello. Uh, we became owners in 2007. This farm dates back to the mid 19th century into the 1850s, 1860s. We recently purchased the farm in 2019 from the Tower family. I met Dan and Iris through the co-op. So I was working in produce and Dan was delivering apples at four in the morning. You know, we found out that they were trying to sell the farm and looking for someone who wanted to keep it in orchard. He was able to coach us a little bit where the trees were and how to take care of them to ensure that we would be stewards of, of the farm and that we would carry on his work, his life's work. Allison Wilcox, 2009. I'm a board member with the Lexington Co-op, and I'm also the CEO of Girl Scouts of Western New York. And I really wanted to find leadership roles that I could contribute to the community, and thought being a board member with the Lexington Co-op was one of the best ways I could do that. It's just a phenomenal training ground for leadership. Valerie Rutberg smith 2009. Allison Ewing, 2010. We've been a cooperative bakery for seven years. When we started up, when Val was selling our bread and I was making our bread, um, the co-op was a huge factor of why we made it through our first year in business, which is a huge hurdle for small businesses. Having a wholesale partner that was willing to carry us from the get-go and not only do that, but promote us and be passionate about us was a game changer. We're there for them and they're there for us. And there's nothing more than the feeling of that community and that support system that like we just don't have with anybody else. If we wouldn't be where we are today without the co-op and what they've done for and with us. My name is Matt Caldero and I joined the co-op in 2010. One of the, the best things I love about the co-op is just how involved my kids are. My kids love the co-op. My four-year-old has always said he wants to be a co-op man when he gets older. 
What is a co-op man? <laughs> I don't know. When he was about two and a half, three years old, it was, uh, it was on his board at school. He said he was going to be a co-op man, so. Dan Myers, 2015. Before every Bills game, you can find me at the co-op picking up hot dogs, picking up sausages. I love the black bean chicken sausage, uh, putting them on some Costanza's rolls, making sure I got a couple CBWs in the cooler. On game day, eating healthy, eating local. It's a win-win. Go Bills. My name is Valentina Garcia Montaño, and this is Papi. We became owners at the co-op in 2016. Che Garcia Chimichurri is a sauce that I decided to start about six years ago. Start making it, and then I was trying to figure out, you know, how to market the sauce. The co-op has been an incredible part of lounging and sharing the chimney love. All the cooking demos were so much fun. You know, people love to know their vendors, where their food comes from, and when you have that close connection, it, it makes it special. My name is Courtney Nelson Benson, and I am the owner of L. James. The co-op was probably the top of the list for my goal wholesale account. I'm just really proud to have my products in there. In our own community, we have so much to offer. And when you really embrace that and you connect with people and you collaborate with other local businesses, magic happens. My name is Reed Olnick. And my name is Karina Loera. I'm the founder of Jekka Energy Bar Company, and we make artisanal plant-based nutrition bars that, are, um, that actually feature global flavors. I love the mission that Lexington Co-op has and how greatly it aligns with us, and we love working with them. When they called us and said, we want to carry your bars, it was like, ta-da, we, we have now arrived. Welcome to Urban Fruits and Veggies Buffalo Go Green Urban Farm. When I was still working in insurance, I started to do some research about food deserts and lack of access to healthy food options in underserved communities and I wanted to try to do something about it. I love being an owner of the co-op because I have confidence in what I buy from there. For folks who are interested in eating healthy or trying to prevent or mitigate diet-related diseases, shopping at the co-op is a great option. Christine Allgaier, 2019. My husband and I moved here from Brooklyn, New York, and I would personally put the co-op even yeah, cooler than our grocery store in Brooklyn, I think. And is, I think, more affordable, for sure, than a grocery store was in Brooklyn. Um, we have three young kids. One of the things I love is that the co-op highlights local growers um, and talks about those things, because I think it's important for the kids to kind of know a little bit more about where their food comes from. Hi, I'm Emily Allen. And I'm Lila Allen. And we're the Kitchen Twins. When we were younger, we were natural food entrepreneurs. And I think that's one of the reasons the co-op is so special for us because we walk in there and see all of these local brands with a story behind them, so much hard work. And then with everybody that goes there, they love going there. And it just creates a really um, inspiring foodie environment. And the co-op has definitely helped us on our cooking journey as we've done a few Instagram live videos with them. Drea Denor, 2020. So I am the founder of Feed Buffalo which is Western New York's only and first organic and halal food pantry. I've discovered the importance of a healthy lifestyle, and that is why I shop at Lexington Co-op. I know that the food is mostly local. I know that it's purchased with love, with care, and with the community in mind. I'm Amelia Palermo, and I became a member owner of the Lexington Co-op in 2021 during the pandemic, and I'm member owner number 20,000. Happy birthday, happy, happy birthday. Happy 50th anniversary to the Lexington Co-op. Congratulations, Lexington Co-op. Yay! Happy 50th, Lexington Co-op. We love you. 50 years, wow. It's just amazing that this community asset, this institution has survived and thrived and grown and helped to build a strong local food system for 50 years now. It's a really beautiful story of empowerment and social change coming from just regular people. Happy golden 50th anniversary. Happy 50th anniversary, Lexington Co-op. I am pleased to be an owner. Feliz aniversario, Co-op. Te queremos mucho y nos vemos pronto. 50 shunen kinen. Omedetou gozaimasu. 
Congratulations to all my friends and neighbors who have made this possible. And thank you for everything. Congratulations on your 50th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Lexington Co-op. Congratulations, and I hope you have 50 more. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary, 50, 50 years strong. strong. One, two, three. Happy, Happy 50th, 50th anniversary, anniversary Co-op. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were going to say Co-op at the end. Happy 50th to the Co-op. It's, um, I turned 50 and it was kind of a downer, but uh, wish I were 50 again. So take it slow and enjoy every minute of it. Congratulations, this is an amazing accomplishment. I can't wait to see it in 50 more years. <laughs>